Hi everyone, Nate Frazier here. I just wanted to put out a video here today to discuss an article I'd, I'd written about uh, evaluating Snapchat and Fortuna Silvermines. Uh, a friend of mine asked me to kind of take a deep dive on it and I wanted to have some fun with it. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm not just going to be doing chart analysis. I'm going to do pretty much everything. Financials, market, drivers, ratios, and I'm going to have some chart stuff for it. Uh, with that as well, um, one of the questions that came up is, well, maybe how can we play this short term with some options, puts, uh, calls, that kind of thing. Uh, just so you are aware, this is not financial advice. Um, if you're uh, a fund manager, a former fund manager, what does Warren Buffett say? I think the first rule of uh, investment is to not lose money. Second rule of investment is C rule one. Um, so basically here... Fund managers may have 5, 10, 20% gains per year. Um, I, as a hobbyist, can kind of look at different types of plays uh, for education and entertainment purposes here because I want to kind of look where we might have uh, a possibility of getting 20, 30, 50% in a week. Um, now, last with this, this is there's no crystal ball here. There are ways of looking at things, and you have to look at these things through the lens of probabilities and not certainties. What might be likely, what's not likely. And in this type of game, you're looking for, I don't know, 55, 60, 65 percent uh, success. So by no means are, e are either of these things a home run. Um, but I wanted to kind of walk you through an analysis here uh, and what I'm looking at for this. So with that, let's bring up... Uh, the slideshow I got going on here. So I'm going to kind of walk you through a story here. I'm not going to spend a, a whole lot of time on Snapchat. Uh, I'm not a general equities kind of guy. I'm much more invested with the metals and the miners. So a uh, vast majority of this, I'm going to be looking through the Fortuna part of this. But I wanted to use some of these same uh, principles to, to look through Snapchat here. So Snapchat, what are some of the, the major market drivers? Most recently, um, I guess it was in April of last year, um, in April of last year, there was an iOS update that messed with the uh, security settings for Snapchat to put advertisers uh, uh, through the app and, and, and kind of read through all of your privacy stuff and figure out the best ways to target you. Uh, this then ended up manifesting itself come October where advertisers had dropped off and hurt their stock price a lot. So we'll see that in the charts in a bit. Um, most recently, you saw Facebook took uh, was it a 23% dive in a day or something like that on lost advertisers, um, and then Snapchat and some other uh, stocks as well took a dive on the Facebook move, and then this came out basically they said Snapchat and Facebook agree that the future of social media looks like TikTok, basically saying hey they do it better than us, so that's a warm and fuzzy. Uh, but then pretty much the next day what happened was uh, I think it went up 68% in a day or something like that snapchat So when these things go up some in, in vast moves up or vast moves down these things can also be corrected But let's just see if this is a one-time thing um, Also with this you can see it gained a lot of users um, It had revenue jump and it, it was also their their first net profit, which they've been around for I think four years, three four years, something like that. So, what you can see with that is that they've been increasing their revenues. They've been also increasing, um, well, decreasing their losses, and, and now they uh, actually have a profit. Now, with that profit, I think it was like 22 million or so. Uh, and with that. I, I did the math on it, and it comes out to be something like a 2,818 times P/E ratio. Uh, let's just say maybe 12 to 20 is is a is a good measure. When you're looking at somewhere in the thousands, it's it's slightly highly overvalued. So also with that, I I did a 1131x price to cash flow. Um, I'm, I'm going to do this type of same thing with Fortuna just to put things into perspective. So with this right now, the, the stock is significantly overvalued for what its, its profits are, but that could also indicate that, that it's in, in big growth. Um, some of the other drivers for this, um, it did overcome some of the security issues, which should help out with the advertising. Um, also with this, 
if you look at the the trend zone here, you can see it's it's below uh, the 200 and the 400 day moving average. Um, one of the big things here you can see is that this big blue line here is that it trends very closely with the Nasdaq. Now this big gap down a couple months ago was the security uh, settings that led to the advertisement problem. Um, and while this went down, you could see Nasdaq went up, but now you can see the Nasdaq's correcting and then so is Snapchat down. And with that, um, Snapchat and a lot of these other types of stocks closely like the FANG type of things are in indexes. They, they trade with the NASDAQ index, uh, if you're trading with the NASDAQ. So basically, if you have major market moves where people are selling off these big ETFs with baskets of, of all these things, you can have a, a general move down to Snapchat despite good news for the company. So I'm going to kind of look through this a little bit more. Uh, with this, you can see the NASDAQ as a whole. Uh, it's it's just been up for what 10 years so um, and, and with that uh, what goes up must come down and many people think that obviously the the markets are potentially in a correction phase 10 20 30 percent whatever it's going to be um, I want to pay more attention to the Nasdaq here because it's more trading with the technology sector so um, with this you can see that the Nasdaq has been trading above this 200 day moving average for a very long period of time. Um, and right now this gap between the 200 and the 400 is huge. And as you can see, this price is starting to kind of roll over a little bit. And when this happens, it, trade, it, it traded down below the 200. And now you can see also this FIB retracement went down um, below the, the 236 and it bounced off the 400. So what I'm looking at here is a potential with this price going sideways to down that this 200, 400 in the next couple of months could create a death cross, which could further put a lot of pressures uh, downward on the stocks. Um, one of the things also with this, uh, NASDAQ is up 4x in five years. Um, that's just insane. Um, one of the other things with the Snapchat here was, if you can take a look at this tiny bar down here, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a giant green volume bar. Um, you can see this also with this gap over, over here and this giant volume bar here looks to me kind of almost like a little bit like a short squeeze that this gap down here, this red uh, candle down here and then whew, next day up, bam, this green. So it looks like it could bounce off of, it bounced off the 50 day. It's got some support here. I'll, I'll go over that in a little bit. Um, but with the NASDAQ overall, I'm, I'm thinking that it's possible this thing can go sideways to down over time. Who knows, it could bounce off this thing and, and launch now because maybe the correction is in. Um, let's see. Uh, with this as well, we have, um, I, I feel like the NASDAQ has already done its melt up. I know you have the David Hunters out there that are saying that, hey, look, we may be having this final melt up coming. Well, if you look at this over a period of time, it just looks like the, this whole thing has melted up. So, um, I don't know. I mean, 4X in five years is a lot. Uh, I also think that it's quite possible that with this correction coming down, it's going to take everything in the sector down. So, you can have a Snapchat with this, uh, with this massive volume candle up. And it's kind of like swimming against a current where you can maybe see it, it push up. It, it, you might have also a, a momentum trade here where look how high it was over the over the summer and the like. And maybe it can get back to there. But you notice it was swimming with the current with the NASDAQ with this blue line here. So I can see that it's possible we have a little bit of a rally here. But to me, this big this big green... Uh, this big green bar here looks like it's ripe for people to take some profits off of it. Um, I think we have some support here below, uh, somewhere around 35. Um, I think further down we're looking at 28. Um, but how am I playing this? I'm looking at some puts. Now, clear, bear in mind, I would not play this at all this week because it's just too too crazy for me at the moment but if you had a gun to my head what i'd be looking for um, would be the march 18 22 uh, puts anything in the next week or two you have no idea what's going to happen but in march late february who knows when they're going to actually raise rates and i think raising rates 
against the NASDAQ is going to hurt particularly hard. Um, and with that, you could have uh, this big move up get, get corrected. So I'm looking for potential 35 strike price uh, for 250. That might be a little bit on the low end, but what I would probably do is play that for this week or so, maybe next week, try and get out at 25-30% uh, and I'm done. Um, I'm not looking to hold this thing through the end. There's just too much volatility with it. But I think in the short term, that big green candle is going to get corrected a little bit, and that might increase the value of these puts. Uh, I, You can't really have a tight stop on these things. Um, I would probably look at around a 25 or 30% stop just because the volatility of this is crazy. You're going to get stopped. If you have a tight stop on this thing, you're going to get stopped out in five minutes. Um, so... Anyway, that's where I was looking at with Snapchat with Fortuna. Uh, Fortuna is pretty much my favorite stock at the moment right now. My disclaimer here is I'm, I'm very long Fortuna. Uh, part of this year, I'm going to tell you why I'm, I'm, I'm very long them, but let's, let's go into uh, some of the issues that have been plaguing them. So uh, I'll cover some of the, uh, the financial overview in a second, but... One of the big things that happened was in November, uh, an environmental mine permit was revoked by Samarinet from Mexico. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But when that was revoked, the mine never stopped producing. So it still kept uh, pulling silver out of the ground, uh, the San Jose mine. Um, and eventually, a couple weeks later, I think it was like six weeks later, um, they did get the authorization to continue for 12 years. The problem with it being is right now, it looks like that 12 years, maybe two years. Um, so there's some stuff that's hanging over the stock right now at the moment. So Fortuna at a glance, uh, the PE ratio is 11.45. 11 I'm seeing peers somewhere around 20 to 30, 24 for, I think it was Pan American. Uh, price to cash flow is 644. For, uh, Pan American was somewhere around 10. Market cap is 945 million, so we're just shy of a billion. Um, I'll credit Dave Kranzler with this. He pointed me on to the fact that uh, some of its peers that are about to be producing, like they're they're right now producing 300 or so thousand gold equivalent ounces, but some of their peers um, that are somewhere around 450 or so are are trading somewhere around 3 billion or so for market cap uh, as of next summer. They should be in the 450 to 500,000 gold equivalent ounces. So what you're looking at here is the market cap is potentially uh, about a third of what it what it could be or should be. Um, as you can see, the 52-week range is closing <laughs> is trading very close to the very low end of that range, um, and you can see it was up to about eight and a half bucks. Um, what you also notice with this is this is a big thing because my friend had asked me, hey, take a look at Fortuna Silver Mines. What happens if silver goes up to 2550? And I was like, well, funny you should ask that because it's not tracking silver. Now, I'll show you that in a second. But I found it has a high relationship to GDXJ. Um, we obviously talked about the, the environmental permitting issue. Uh, it's about to, it, this past year has record gold equivalent production. Uh, recently, Lindero has been ramped up. And there's a new mine and construction in the Ivory Coast, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. But if you're just looking at this Fortuna silver mine chart, you can see in 2016 and then 2020, when when this stock goes up, it screams. And you can see in in 2020, this is like a four and a half. Uh, in 2016, rather, it's, this was like a four and a half x. You can see back in 2020, it went from what one and a half to nine. So you're looking at a, what, a 6x six, six move there. So if you can see this, it's pretty much on the low end of, of what it trades. Um, and that, funny funny about this, because this really doesn't even count all of the gold that they're getting from the Rocks Gold Mine acquisition now. So anyway, let's take a look at this. Um, and, and back when I was evaluating this as a silver uh, producer, I, I, I was kind of really running into some issues here because I was trying to do some correlations and I found that it was, if you look at over the period of time, I think since 2018 it was, silver was up like 39% and Fortuna was down 39%. Whereas you could see First Majestic was up 51% and that had a very close relationship to silver. Uh, you would expect for a silver mine to outperform silver. Um, 
And let's see, Endeavor here was up 23% and 34% for Pan American. Uh, but likewise, you go on, you look at gold, and you can see gold was up 45% over that period of time, and Fortuna was up 31%. So there was some correlation there. Um, you could see Newmont and Barrick, and even Fortuna, um, sorry, Pan American had a much uh, stronger relationship to uh, gold in that time. So let's see, moving on. Um, here is a chart I had done in my article that pointed the relationship to uh, Fortuna and GDXJ. And you can see, uh, when we're going back to 2020, you could see after that move from March 20 up, you could see gold was outperforming um, a lot of the stocks, but then gold started consolidating. And this green channel here, you could see Fortuna was trading between six and eight dollars for pretty much an entire year while gold was consolidating. Um, so likewise, you can see recently, there was a Peru issue with the elections. Uh, Fortuna then took a dive with Bear Creek and Pan American and, and other miners in Peru. Uh, you can see when GDX started trading up, uh, GDXJ started trading up, Fortuna was recovering, but there was still that delta there. Um, and then likewise, this red dot here is when we had the problem with the mine permitting. And then a couple days later is when GDXJ tanked on the gold price. So not only did we have the environmental permitting issue, but then we had the sector as a whole kind of collapsing around it. So when we eventually did get the permit uh, reinstated, you could see this gap up here, but GDXJ has been trading sideways to down, and then you had the sideways to down. So my big hypothesis here was that $1.52 that we lost in this, in this red part has never been recovered. So for pretty much every share I'm buying of them, they're giving me $1.52 for free. It's just a matter of time before it comes back. So with that, and I also wanted to kind of take a look because we're looking at GDXJ, we're looking at gold, we're looking at NASDAQ. So I want to do some comparisons here. Um, I love the gold market right now. I know that it's been beaten down for the last, I don't know, year and a half. But if you look at this, I did the FIB uh, retracement from the very bottom of 2016 to up to the top and then brought it back. And you can see this 0.236 line. It's just beautiful here for being resistance at times. And then you can see down here, it stops at the 0.382. I mean, this is like, this is like actually almost exact. Um, when you dial in a little bit closer, uh, you can see that the 400 and the 200 had a death cross in September. And then pretty much since August or so, we've had an uptrend that's been colliding with this downtrend. So when we've had these massive moves up, it's smacked against this downtrend. Now there's this big battle royale going on. Who's gonna win? This consolidation or is the long-term uh, up, up, uh, the long -term uptrend support gonna be holding here? So anyway, you have the FIB retracements here. Now it's possible in the short term that we could have a failure down from this triangle and then a push back up like a false breakout. Or, worst case scenario, it can go up and then fail down to 16.75 or so. Now, if it falls down before below that, I mean, we're, we're talking some danger zone. And if you have an overall market smash, uh, maybe in March, um, maybe the, the rate hikes happen and the markets just, you know, throw a temper tantrum. It's quite possible we can have a washout with the entire sector. But I'm kind of in that whole Michael Oliver campaign of the, the arm wrestling where I think as money is rotating out of some of these sectors, it's going to be going into more defensive things um, where you're talking uh, the 10 the year, you're talking gold uh, and even cash. So we can have a situation here where... Um, gold and uh, the DXY move up simultaneously. So one of the things I wanted to do here was I also wanted to look at the Dow to gold, ra gold, Dow to gold ratio. And you can see where there were certain times where the gold price is higher, Dow is low. You can see that uh, this is in the lower end. On the top end here, you can see this is where um, the, the, the Dow is overpriced to gold. So you can see the dot com top up here. And I can see up here where I have a projected path where one of two things is going to happen. Either gold is going to go way up or the Dow is going to go way down or some combination thereof. So I'm expecting gold to then outperform the stock market. With that, um, okay, so what are the mechanics that are going on here with gold? So I ha I, I've 
created this big chart. I put this out a while ago, but big picture here is this big dome is the DXY kind of rolling over. Um, and I felt that if you look at these green areas here, these are the times when gold was moving up. You can see the green here. Uh, the blue here is when gold was moving down. And, and then down here you have the 10 years. So people were saying, well, when rates went up, that was good for gold. Now, here are the, the, here are the, the Fed funds right here. Now, when this started going up, it didn't really do much for gold. It was actually the 10-year going down, which seemed to do wonders for gold. Um, I correlated those, and the, the big move here was where we were talking uh, the end of, what, 18 or so, in 19 into um, the summer of, of 2020. And that's when you can see the 10-year starting to go up. Uh, that's where, sorry, it ran into a headwind. So with that... Uh, I also want to take a look at the NASDAQ to GDXJ ratio because I can feel here if the NASDAQ is going to roll over, uh, the G GDXJ should have a nice path down here as far as the, the ratio goes. So I think the GDXJ is going to have a strong move up. Um, let's see, I should have something here. Okay, I have the GDXJ to FSM ratio. Now, earlier on, this was a silver mine, so there's no real correlation here. But as we come on closer, I can see that we had this low 291 price here. Um, and then last year, you could see in 2021 how um, how Fortuna uh, outperformed um, the GDXJ. So right now, it's kind of up around that top bar where it's underperforming GDXJ for the longest period of time. And I feel that this is going to snap back and... We have some torque then um, to gain on the GDXJ. So right now, I think the big battle that we have for gold, which is then going to ultimately uh, help us downstream with Fortuna, uh, I think it's all about the 200-day moving average. And just this past week, on Friday, it closed right above it. Um, and I have some arcs here, and it just so happens to be following up these arcs. Uh, there's a beautiful formation going on here. Um, and I wanted to also talk about the DXY a little bit here where um, you can see that uh, last week I saw the high RSI. I said, hey, look, it looks like it's going to turn around a little bit. It did, came down a bit, but we could have a bump up with the DXY. Now, is it going to fail at some of these moving averages or is it going to go back up to the top of the channel? Don't know. Could it fail down more? It looked like this channel gave it uh, some good support. Um, let's see what else we have here. Some of the things that are being overlooked with Fortuna, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but some of the things that are kind of overlooked are they have the, a new gold mine going in on the Ivory Coast, and there was the construction update. Then we have, um, most recently we have some news that came out. Obviously there was a coup d'etat in Burkina Faso. I don't know how to pronounce that properly, but uh, there was a, uh, a coup d'etat that came out and on top of that, we have now um, the Samaranet came out and said, well, you know what, I, I, we gave them a two-year extension. We didn't give them a 12-year extension. But all of Fortuna's documents said, I want a 12-year extension. They were told that they were granted it. And now they're coming back and saying it was a typo. So there is some, some hang over this. I, I know the stock went down about $0.08 cents on Friday, where generally in the sector there was a little bit of a positive move up. So it did look like this dinged it a little bit, but they didn't really recover any of that $1.52 yet. So um, it's already pretty much priced into the price. So, you know, I think the only way we can go from here is up. Uh, likewise, over in Africa at these new mines, they're having incredible, um, incredible drill holes. Uh, I'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, with that, I wanted to kind of take a look at the overall uh uh, Fortuna chart. Um, so what is some torque here that can move this up in a hurry? Now we saw how Fortuna can go up four, five, six times in a hurry. So with that, we're talking about how um, uh, we have uh, this arc here for Fortuna. A lot of people can see this arc. Uh, you can draw these arcs however you want, but sometimes you can really see how there's a correlation here. And you can see this down channel where the the price is kind of battling down in this channel so what i was looking for here was was there some point in time where the price stopped 
going down where the downtrend said okay enough already and I can see this here where it looks like you're putting the price pressure it looks like a triangle and look at this price is so far below all of these moving averages so if these things happen um, this price can move up in a hurry uh, you're looking at how uh, you got a couple things going on here first of all this mine permit situation could get priced into uh, Fortune at some point in time when it's realized that well, wait a second look at all this look at look at all the money this is producing look how low this PE ratio is so you have that issue you have so it can outperform its peers in GDXJ you have GDXJ that can then outperform the GDX G GDX could be then looking to outperform gold because both these are are at its lows and then you have gold to potentially outperform markets as the markets roll over. And then you have, as I was mentioning, uh, Seguela and the Ivory Coast here. You have, if you go back and take a look at all of the news that they have, um, that they first bought Rocks Golds uh, last year, and that's not been even included in the price at all. So I think they had 300,000 uh, gold equivalent ounces this past year. And by next summer, they're looking to be somewhere around 500,000 gold equivalent ounces. And this price at, at, at a billion or so for a market gap is insane because if we're looking at even 2,200 or so gold prices uh, by then, you're looking somewhere at potentially 6x from where we are right now with Fortuna's prices. So I have the full analysis in, in my article, which is going to be linked below. Um, because I can't get into everything here with this video, but this is kind of giving you the overview. You can see here uh, a 17.2 gram per ton over 30 meters at the Sunburn Sunbird. Uh, you got another one. Uh, let's see. There's the construction decision. Uh, you have another. You have more drill results going on here. Uh, where's that at? Right here. Another 16.5 over six. That was two months ago. And then recently there was another one I'm looking for here. Uh, let's see, where is it at? 20.2 grams over 18 meters. So they have they have a lot of uh, interesting things going on in, in, um, in, in Africa at the moment. And with that, it looks like the sky is a limit for Fortuna. So the big question here is, well, how would you play it? Um, I'm not really looking right now to play this short term. Um, just because I'm in an accumulation phase right now. So if I'm taking a look at what I would do for the short term, if you had a gun to my head right now, um, if I'm looking for the two-week the two uh, uh, potential move up, I, I think that we could be moving sideways for a little bit. But if we could, I'm looking for uh, the 30 cent calls on uh, February 18. I don't think it's going to get over four, even with a, a nice move up, because I think this uh, permitting situation is kind of hung over for them a little bit until they get clarification. Big picture also is that I think the general markets, even like myself, might think of this more of a silver miner rather than a gold miner. And right now they're only a 27% silver miner or so. So with that, um, how, am, how else am I playing this? Um, I'm liking the January 2023. Uh, just because in the short term, I don't know what's going to happen uh, with with people coming back to the company. <clears throat> but I can see that January 2023 could, I mean, if we have a strong move up in gold in the next few months, you're going to be looking for value. When, when all these stocks are somewhere at, at 70, 80 RSI, you're going to be looking for where can I find value. And that's when Fortuna is going to uh, snap, snap much higher. So I'm also looking at the... Uh, um, uh, the strike price of three dollars for a dollar two, um, and then also if you're looking at a six x potential with Fortuna over the course of the next year or so, um, I you know you could go up to the the poker table and kind of you know go all in on one number, but I would at this point I'm I'm kind of looking where hey where can I get some outside of the money calls where I might get a lot of torque on it, so I have a ten dollar strike price that I'm looking at that I might put a bid in for 10 cents and maybe get like, you know, two, three, four hundred dollars on them because I, I did the math on that where you could be getting like 30, 40, 50 times return on something like that if the stock price is hitting uh, a 20 or so. So maybe $20 is, is a little bit on the high end. Um, it's definitely at this point in my mind today, a six to seven dollar stock that's just completely overlooked by 
the entire market. So uh, with that, um, I hope you found it uh, interesting. Leave some comments below. Uh, do you think I'm out of my mind with Fortuna? <laughs> or uh, do you think it's uh, deep value uh, with Snapchat? I'm not over overly confident in the NASDAQ in the next three to six months. So um, I think any kind of short-term moves there are going to be short-lived. So with that, uh, thanks everyone. Bye.